I'm gonna show you how I built my previous swim platform in just 43 seconds. Start the clock now. Take a hardwood four foot by eight foot, three quarter inch thick plywood board. Cut it in half, wood glue together with stainless steel screws. Cut this into the desired shape. In my case, two feet by six feet with more cut to match the stern of the boat. Sink two stainless steel U-bolts for attaching to the top side. Spread three layers of epoxy on each side while overlapping the edges for a combined six layers. Paint, then add sand or grit for a non-slip grip. Swim platform done, but we need a straight edge to properly support it once mounted. Easily build a boss by putting a piece of wood flat on the back, through bolting it in and filling in the gaps. Ta-da, that's a boss. Stainless steel screw the hinges to the swim platform with a small gap, tie the support lines and test. It works amazing. Now enjoy the added two more feet of boat, easier access to the water, and all around good fun. Done. That is how I built my previous swim platform 3.0. I got great use out of it and I held up well for more than 400 days and 2200 nautical miles of sailing and cruising. Unfortunately, I neglected an easily repairable gash that over time let water in and rotted out the center. So join me as I build an even better swim platform far from the major supply chains of the US or Europe here in the beautiful Eastern Caribbean. Along the way, I'll lay out an easy to follow, detailed step-by-step -step guide on how and with what materials I use to build Swim Platform 4.0. Let's dive on in. First job I'm gonna be working on, Swim Platform. Let's get it off. Before I could begin work on Swim Platform 4.0, I had to remove Swim Platform 3.0. Thankfully, all the screws came out of the hinges and I was able to remove it easily. I also noticed that the way I epoxy the screws in worked great and there was no water intrusion. Marine grade supplies could be hard to find. Thankfully, there's this place. All right, so the Island Water World bus brings you right to, you guessed it, Island Water World. They've got a large staff here, so I have no doubt I'll find my favorite guy. Pretty quick. Run. Hey, what are you guys? Good, we got a big list today, you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Island Waterworld has six stores across the Caribbean. Thankfully, they carry everything you could possibly need to get any project done. So as you can see, Island Waterworld Grenada here has a really good stock of everything you need. I'm able to do this project and really any other that I need just from what's in stock here. But having this in such a remote place like Grenada, it's really important because you want to be able to bring your boat down here, a place where there's not going to be any hurricanes, where you're safe with your insurance, but then also while you're down here and you're docked, get to do some work, some projects. As soon as the season's over, get back up there and on the adventure. A lot of people have noticed I have a really good swim platform on the back of my older sailboat and I get a ton of use out of it. So today we're gonna make the fourth iteration and hopefully the last I ever have to do. So I decided for the actual core of the swim platform, I'm gonna be using a marine grade ply. There's a lot of different materials I could be using for this, like this honeycombing up there or this foam core here. And you hear a lot of people using foam core for these sort of projects. If this was something that was below the waterline, I'd definitely be using a foam core, but marine grade ply is gonna give me structure, it's gonna be easy to work with, and because it is marine grade, it is gonna be very uh, protected against the water. That with the resin, with the gel coat, with the biaxial fiberglass, with the paint, it's gonna be a lot on there to protect it. And even my last one that wasn't marine grade ply and didn't have all of this extra fiberglass on it lasted a long time. This should be a permanent solution to it. Cool thing about Island Water World is they deliver. So we're gonna be able to get this, all my stuff I'm getting today, shipped directly to where I'm at at Clark's Court. Super useful. Here on the island, logistics can be a huge pain. So having them able to pop it into the van and get it to where you need to be is excellent. Bringing a list is so important. I really gotta overstate this, that I'm pretty bad at doing lists, but today I actually wrote and then rewrote this whole list just to get everything right. And I'm really happy I did because you really need to be specific. Now, a woven type of fiberglass like this is great and it'll look really good, but it's got no structure to it. If I had done even just this on my last one though, it would have been enough to have kept it together so no water would have gotten in. But this one we're going overboard on. We're going with a fiberglass biaxle. And you'll see we've got this woven top layer here. It even has extra stitching going across each layer. And on the bottom side, you've got sort of like this chop strand. That's gonna help give us a little more thickness. So it's gonna give me two layers, top and bottom, and then it's gonna give me four layers combined on the outside edges of it. That'll be perfect. I'm gonna take nine yards of this. There are cheaper fiberglasses that I could have used, but fiberglass biaxle has a great compromise between the woven and the chop strand on the other side. Perfect for the swim platform. This is peel ply, and I'll be completely honest with you guys, I've never worked with it before, so I'm a little bit skeptical, but a really good friend of mine who's done a ton of fiberglass work, you guys know him, he's been on the channel a bunch of times, he's a great guy, Jay Safro. 
He's gonna be helping me out with this and he really urged me to get the peel ply. The peel ply, as I understand it, is gonna go over the fiberglass to help cinch it down and sort of be like a half measure between just putting it on and hoping it sticks well and doing a full vacuum bag. Now a full vacuum bag would be a very serious, large operation and I just don't have that equipment, that time. I just don't need to do that much. So this peel ply will be perfect. Peel ply is perfect to make sure the fiberglass all stays down, uniform, and gets the right amount of epoxy resin into the fibers. It's really important to make sure you don't get it too saturated or it'd be dry. Resin, this is the resin, and this is the slow pattern that's supposed to get it. Perfect. I've used West Systems on a ton of stuff on the boat. There's a lot of epoxies to choose from. When it comes to anything structural though, I think this is really some of the best epoxy on the market. You'll see it pretty much every other sailor working on it, so you know it's good stuff. I can't imagine what I would have done if the store wasn't here in Grenada. I can't believe to explain to you guys how important it is to have a huge variety of stainless steel whatever to work with. Because it's when you lose one of these and you're out on the ocean and you can't get another one of these that you really wish there was a store like this. So as far as U-bolts go, I've actually got quite a few options here. I can tell this is pretty close to what I had before, maybe even a little bit bigger, but that's fine. It's gonna look really nice. And this one actually already has the washers and the nuts with it, as well as a cross piece here. That's all gonna sit sort of upside down as I go to build it with the fiberglass and the wood going over it. So that way only this one part here is sticking up when you're done that the rope goes through to support it. Pretty simple. One thing that's nice about this project is I've sort of already built it once before, so I do know what I'm looking for here. These little wood screws are stainless steel, hopefully are a better quality than what I bought last time, because those ones rusted, and they just kind of make everything look a little ugly. So hopefully these ones are a little bit better, like I said, and they're gonna go into the hinges that are actually gonna support the whole system. Now with my last swim platform, a lot of the screws were actually able to just pull straight out because the wood had rotted before them. But because I put epoxy in them, that epoxy was still holding on quite a bit. So even with this, I'm gonna be pre-drilling first, putting epoxy resin in there as I screw it in. And there should be no contact between the outside and the wood inside. That's the goal. These are the resin spreaders that we're gonna be using. Uh, they pretty much just let you put the resin over and help it permeate into the fiberglass. If there's ever an air pocket within the structure, it's gonna be a weak point. We want it to be as strong as possible. In order to do that, we want to permeate the resin into the glass. Resin by itself is actually pretty weak stuff. Fiberglass by itself is just flimsy. When you add the two together, it's a composite that's extremely tough, extremely durable, and extremely structurally sound. Fiberglass, we need this. Mixing cups, get our pours right. And remember, whenever you're pouring this stuff, you want to make sure you don't pour too much of it at once or else it might flash. Because we're using the slow cure, it's less likely to do that. We're gonna have more working time. It's very important to get the slow cure hardener to this, not the fast cure. The fast cure would just be too much resin in here at once, and pretty much every time you try to put in the amount we need, it would flash on you and wouldn't give you much working time. So these are important. Nitrate gloves, because getting epoxy off your hands is never fun. And last but not least is wood screws. So remember, we're gonna be cutting the wood in half and then sinking them both together with these. But in between, you might use a marine grade wood glue. Instead, we're just gonna use the resin that we already have. That in between is gonna make sure no moisture can go in between there, as well as it's gonna bond the two pieces of wood together. But then these screws throughout it are also gonna make a big difference. And the last one that I made, I did this as well, and it just worked out really well. So I'm gonna keep it going. I'll say again, the importance of having your notes written down so you have a good list to go off of, having somebody here good to help you who does this every day is really important. Big thank you, Ron, appreciate you, man. You're welcome, sir. So you've got everything together here and this probably took, what, like an hour to get every everything little thing. Together. And as we're going through this as well, you know, there might be one product that's not quite what you want. You might have to compromise a little bit. And that's what's really good to talk to them, see what they know and they think works best for it. But here's everything that we need, and we're gonna check out what this is all gonna cost next to build a swim platform like this. And as far as materials go, and I really shouldn't need anything else, we're looking at $663.26 US. This is a busy working boatyard, and it is hot here. Just getting back to the boat, it's absolutely incredible, I gotta say, like how long it took me to get everything together how much it costs, because it's you know, marine grade everything, but then how small of a box you can fit it all into. Whew. Seemed like a lot more when it was all laid out, but this is the important stuff we need. We're gonna get this swim platform built. First cut is 73 inches. Here to give me 23 inches. Then I'll sandwich those two, epoxy them together, screw them together. 
and that'll give me the rough outline rectangle that I want before I then trim away to give the final shape of the swim platform. This is JJ, by the way. JJ, wait. Nice to meet you guys. JJ has been working on this beautiful boat. And uh, needless to say, JJ knows his boat wood. So he's giving me some hand making the, the most important cuts here. Now that we have the base outline done, I can epoxy the two of them together and then use stainless steel screws to help really hold them together tight. I'll let that dry overnight, and then the next day I'm gonna take the grinder, I'm gonna grind out any screws that were there, then I'm gonna take the old swim platform and I'm gonna trace out the shape I want. Now you might notice me using a sawzall to do all these cuts, it's because that's all I really have to work with, so I'm gonna make it work. I'm also gonna use the sawzall and the sander to start making sure the edges are all perfectly flush, getting them just perfect, because this is gonna be the final shape for the whole swim platform before the fiberglass goes on. So I wanna make sure that everything is nice and rounded, and nice and smooth, and a little bit roughed up so that way the fiberglass will adhere to it well. I've got Jay with me, and together we're gonna to start prepping this. Now I'm gonna do this process you see here with the fiberglass and peel ply four times, so don't worry about me explaining all of it here on the first one. We're gonna go over it multiple times because I have to do it multiple times. The important thing to know is you only have a little bit of time you want to get all your prep work done ahead of time. And when you do go to put everything on, you're only going to let it dry a little bit. You're going to remove the peel ply before it's fully dry. And that way you don't have to sand it before you put on the next layer of epoxy. Well, that was super stressful. <laughs> I didn't pre-drill or do anything for where the U-bolts are going to be going through. That ended up being a happy mistake because I'm going to actually do that tomorrow morning. After we've already got the second layer on, I can work through the back of it. And that just means we didn't have to go over those. That would have been a pain if you've had to work with those there. There's no way that would have turned out well. The only way to do this is to after you do the first layer. That means now this is going to have to be the top. Correct. Yeah, which hopefully it doesn't matter which side's top on this. While the first layer of fiberglass dried on the swim platform, I figured it'd be a good time for me to remove the old swim lights. These things were great while they worked, but they all shorted out because they were pretty cheap. It's gonna look ugly before it's gonna look better. Because I'm doing this, I'm seeing this crack line right here, which means water did start to get in. I cannot have water getting to these. This will make them bow and flex and be very bad. And eventually even the uh, swim platform wouldn't be able to hinge if it deforms badly enough. So I will definitely be cracking and doing some work around this and then covering it with at least one or two layers of fiberglass. Now is a frustrating job of removing all of the tape and trying to separate the peel ply from the fiberglass. Peel ply is made out of some special material so it doesn't stick to anything else. So you're technically able to remove it. It's just a lot of work. Board is now dry. Now we're gonna begin peeling the peel ply. I'm very curious to see how this works. Just it's so much easier. Oh, it does peel. What did I tell you? This was some tough stuff that even Jay was having a hard time with. This would be the easiest. Look, look at that. Look at that. Whew. So you're gonna wanna peel the edges first. Yeah. All right, let's do this. I cannot wait to be out of here. The smell, the noise. Yeah, it's, it's funny how much we suffer to go enjoy a sailboat, you know? We're like Cruising. sailing, freedom, yeah. Let's suffer a whole lot first. Cruising ain't free. No. <laughs> this is called sweat equity. Sweat equity. Jay, I've done a lot of sweat equity in my life. Honestly, yeah. I don't know what other types of equity there is. <laughs> I really meant it when I said this stuff was a pain in the butt to get off. I see why it works so well, but it really is not easy stuff to work with. If anybody can think of an easier way to get peel play off, feel free to leave me a comment in the feel free to leave me a comment below. Alright. Big satisfying pull. Wow, it's super satisfying. That's where we want to be. Okay. That means we can just adhere straight to it. Right, we don't have to sand. Yeah. The reason we don't have to sand before we put the next layer of fiberglass and epoxy on is because we didn't let it fully dry. It's still just a little bit tacky, so it's gonna to adhere to the next layer of resin that goes onto it. So here we go with the second one. Basically what we do is we just put some resin on the board, then we lay the fiberglass over it, then we make sure we smooth everything out, and then we smooth that out again with the peel ply, dabbing any places that we might have missed. This ensures we get everything fully saturated, and then the tape around the peel ply makes sure we get all the edges good. 
Oh. I do not need it raining right now. Thankfully, that's already dried and well, as you can tell, it's already fiberglass side up. Can't get wet inside. Oh. Super early, hopefully this is it. Yeah, it's lessening already. I've been so afraid all night that it was gonna downpour and just ruin that board. As well as I've got all my tools and everything up here. This is stressful. Removing the second layer of peel ply is actually a little more difficult because now I have the uneven surface of the other fiberglass underneath it. As you can see, I take a different approach, but eventually it all comes off. That was a lot harder than yesterday's. Letting it dry all the way definitely makes it a bit tougher to peel the ply off, but obviously it still works. Now I've got to just grind off all of this excess, some holes into it for the U-bolts, get those sunk in. So here's a little bit of a mistake that I made. I used the grinder and you can see I already chipped into the top side of the swim platform. It's gonna show through when we put the fiberglass on, which I wasn't thrilled about. I ended up using a chisel, a hammer, everything. And I'll show you guys in a minute what the best tool to use for this was, but until then, I've gotta learn my lesson. Oh, that was a huge pain in the butt. <laughs> gonna sand this and then I can actually start putting the U-bolts in. Ew. This right here is a great reason why people normally pay a professional to do this stuff. Working with fiberglass is terrible. It's dirty, it gets everywhere, you're itchy, it's no fun. This thing's a lot lighter than the last one. I was actually pretty happy once I balanced the board out, so I was ready to move on to the next step, which is sinking the U-bolts in. For this, I'm just gonna drill a couple holes and, and then start chiseling away. If I'd had a router, this would have been two seconds work. But hey, that's boat life. All right, I don't have the right tools to work with, like always. A router would have handled this in like two seconds flat and would have done a perfect job. This one didn't quite turn out as well. The first one, for some reason, turned out a little bit better. Uh, but either way, they're done. I'll be able to sink them, glass them, and then I should be able to get it perfectly flush and flat with all this. Should be pretty nice. I mixed up some more resin and I actually used a fast cure for this because there was no reason to wait around. Tightening the bolts up, getting them just right, and then also putting some stoppers so they didn't leak out the bottom. This one turned out a little bit better because I didn't mess with it. It started to flash kind of at the perfect time. It gets a little hot so I don't go all the way through one at once. The bolts get extremely hot when you use the grinder on them and I didn't want them to melt anything, so I took my time. So this morning we're gonna be finishing off resining, epoxying, and uh, fiberglassing this other side. So this is nice, that way as we fold over the fiberglass, it's not gonna get attached to my nice, beautiful top side, which is pretty perfect, I gotta say. I'm pretty happy with it. And I've decided I'm not gonna use a fairing compound either because I really like what little texture is here. I doubt after three coats I'm gonna be able to even see it, but. Hopefully, if it does remain, it'll just give me a little bit of grip. Step one, lay out and measure your fiberglass. Step two, cut it to size. Step three, do the same with the peel ply to make sure they all line up. Then you can add the resin to the board and then flip and put over the fiberglass. Once the fiberglass is down, now we can start to spread it around. And then the peel ply will go on afterwards to make sure everything gets nice and level. Then we're gonna tape everything up and that's all there is to it. Some platform is good where it's at. We're also losing one of our neighbors here. <laughs> we pack them in pretty tight. Let's see. <laughs> Just another day in paradise. These projects are tough enough on their own, but the fact I've got to do them in a hot boat yard and you can see the sun moving to try to get to me here in Grenada, it's no fun. That was a lot harder than the last two. Uh, not really sure why, but it was nowhere near as easy. It's a big part of me that's thinking, you know, I'm technically done right now. I don't have to do this second layer, but I'm gonna do it. So I want it to be perfect. Corners did fold a little bit, but nothing I can't just smooth out and then maybe add some resin on later. I think I'm gonna get this thing prepped and ready and do this last layer myself all by myself. It's, it's gonna be tough. But I got enough daylight and good weather and if I do this and I'm, I'm done, this really is, I think, think the hardest thing I gotta do on this, this little mini refit, so let's get to it. This would be the fourth and final layer to put on. 
I only do half at a time, so that way I make sure I'm not biting off more than I can chew. You see how the fiberglass and then the peel ply both gets fully saturated, and then I tape the side up. Then I'm gonna go to work on the other side and repeat. So unfortunately, my camera turned off because it ran out of battery, but I quickly did the other half. This didn't turn out as good as I hope, I'm not gonna lie. It's not terrible. It's still above my normal standard, but I'm sure if Jay was here, he would not be as happy. That's it for the main glass work. There is gonna be this rough edge that's gonna curl over, so I'm gonna to have to saw that. Goop on some epoxy, maybe with like a, a compound, and maybe I'll just leave the fairing compound in. That could probably work. Guess I'll use that fairing compound. But anyway, this is it for the night. I am disgusting, and I'm gonna go take a shower with everything I have on. I was beyond thrilled for this to be the last time I had to be doing any of this stuff. Taking off all this tape, and there was so much for me to get through, was certainly a pain. It was also the bottom side of tape that we had put on earlier, but all that was gonna come off so much easier because now I was using the multi-tool. As you'll hear me talk about in a minute, this was the right tool for the job. Because of the multi-tool, being able to get that low, it's making this whole job go 10 times faster. Really happy I got this. It's really strange what tools you can and can't keep on your boat just because of a lack of space and organization. But for some reason, the multi-tool stayed on mine. I haven't really ever used it since, but I'm sure happy that I had it. Now I'll be applying a little bit more epoxy all around the board just to make sure everything's nice and level. The great thing about epoxy is you just do a little bit of sanding and scuff it up and you can just add more and more to it. Once I was satisfied with that, I started putting on the epoxy primer coat. This is the type of paint and epoxy mixed together that I'll also use on the bottom of my boat. This will again help to make sure there's no water intrusion into the swim platform. As well, I started working on the boss again to make it ready to fiberglass so that way when the swim platform's done, I can mount it up on there. The epoxy paint I'm using for this is called Interlux 2000 and I highly recommend it. After that, the next day, I can start painting. I just went with white all over to start with and then also started measuring and bending the stainless steel rub rail that would eventually coat the whole outside edge of this one. I was able to recycle this from my last swim platform, but I did have to do a little bit more bending and a little bit more cutting to make it work. Not ideal. Not ideal in several places here. Some of this turned out really nice, but some of this, that's not good. I think I'm just gonna fill this with straight resin. Just get it prepped and ready, and then just fill it with epoxy and chop strand. <sighs> you know what? As much as that thing wasn't great, it was not this hard to make, I gotta say. This might be the right way to do it, but if I just hadn't neglected that, wouldn't be doing this. The process of getting this rub rail just right was tedious, but I gotta say, I'm really happy with the product now that it's done. I spent some extra time to make sure that the rub rail was gonna be smooth as possible and cleaned where I could get it. As well, I took a little break and had some bacon. Breakfast of champions. Then I got back to it and started mounting the rub rail onto the swim platform. This is gonna require some epoxy and drilling, so timing was crucial on this, but thankfully it turned out well. I'll probably come back through and do a second round of epoxy into there whenever I'm using epoxy again next. I'm actually pretty happy with it. I think it looks really good. Nice. Can't wait to get it painted up with its proper colors. Adventure Born, Fort Pierce, Florida on the back of it. Call it a day. Because I couldn't bend the rub rail to perfectly match the swim platform, I instead used the fairing compound and the West Systems Epoxy to fill any gap. This is really easy to do if you just do some prep work to make sure it can't leak out the bottom. Trying to get back to work is a little bit difficult because I don't have my little workbench that I think used to be right here. Unfortunately, they moved all that, so I've got to build something else with whatever I can find here. Maybe my old platform, but still got work to do on this, still got work to do on that. And I'd like to today put this coat of uh, fiberglass on here, because once I do that, then I can actually start painting, I realized. I can't really do it before it, so got to get to work. Just like my previous swim platform, I went with an easy epoxy or a Rust-Oleum paint. Either will work. Rust-Oleum's a heck of a lot cheaper, so I'd probably have to recommend it. But this is really just painting at this point. Now the boss on the back needed a little bit of work to make sure it all be waterproof. And here you see me cutting up the fiberglass to get it all to fit. This was not an exact science and I was ready to get some use out of this thing. So I may have moved a little bit quicker, but I did find out that the fairing compound of the epoxy 
made the fiberglass stick really, really well to the surface. After I let it dry overnight, I was happy with the result and able to move on back to the swim platform. That looked good, so I moved back onto the boss and started painting it. Getting to see the color put on and a lot of my mistakes fade away into the ice blue color that it is felt really good. I was very happy. Rained again last night, so I do gotta get some moisture off. I'll dry this beautiful pattern off. Look at that. It's like picture perfect. It's important to note that there's been a lot of days passing as this video has gone by. This project took me at least 10 straight days to do. Every layer requires a day to dry, and as well inclement weather with raining really would set things back, so be very careful when you're attempting one of these things. Here I'm taping up around the rub rail just to make sure I don't get any paint on it, which I ended up not worrying about later. But the basic process here is you paint some and then you throw the grit over it. And that's really it. Do that for multiple layers and you're done. I was so happy to be in this final stage. Now I just need to put on the hinges and tie it up and it'll be good. All the hinge bottom parts had all their holes still from the last one. I dip each screw into epoxy and then I put it in and that's all you really gotta do. I put popsicle sticks just to raise up the swim platform a slight bit. That little gap is really important so it never pinches itself and it actually hinges slightly back towards the sailboat. And look at the result, ta-da! This really is nothing fancy, but I gotta say, it's just so useful and I get so much fun out of it. Being this close to the water, dipping my feet in, it's just a wonderful feeling. If I wanna fillet fish, I never get my boat dirty. And as you can see here, I'm a pretty happy camper, even though I'm still on the boat yard. I think this was my last day here and I was ready to get back out on the adventure. The boss, as well as eight hinges, gives it a ton of support at the back, and then those two U-bolts just go to two regular ropes, and you can see right where they go up around my structure, and then down to a bottom post there. That's all that holds the swim platform in place, and it works great. Just remember, you guys, if you get a small gash in it, make sure you repair it immediately. Don't wait like I did. Get out there and enjoy this beautiful world on your sailboat. I spent three weeks in this boatyard, and I gotta say I was so happy to leave even though some friends of mine had to stay behind. But thank you very much, Clark's Court. You are a great place to work. Old sailboats are great. They're sturdy, classy, and best of all, can be inexpensive. My sailboat Adventureborn is a 1984 Beneteau Ideally, 11.5 meters or 37.7 feet. I bought her five years ago for only $23,000 and immediately got to work making upgrades, mainly a swim platform. Now the boat is more like a 40 foot sailboat. Since then, I've enjoyed unrestricted and easy access to the water, both when I want to get wet and when I want to stay dry. It's my hope that this video helps other sailors modernize their old boats for a fraction of the cost. I hope you found this video insightful. Now I hope to see you all out there on the water. Cheers. Thanks for joining me on this adventure. I hope you feel inspired to begin adventures of your own. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for an exclusive in-depth look at this adventure lifestyle and to further support my channel, become a member of my Patreon crew. Link in the description. I'll see you on the next adventure.